Good morning, and welcome to Wake Up Call on WD Live. I'm Susan Papp, the Managing Director of Policy and Advocacy at Women Deliver. It's day three here at Women Deliver 2019, and we're kicking things off today by taking a look at structural change. We'll be examining the question of how we break down silos to create more collaboration. Because we know women don't live their lives in silos, we have to look at the whole girl and the whole woman in order to truly drive progress that counts for gender equality. Today, I'm pleased to have two guests with me this morning who are both champions of cross-sectoral, multidisciplinary approaches. My first guest is Gerda Verberg. She has a standout career in politics and international co cooperation. She's currently the coordinator of Scaling Up, nu the Scaling Up Nutrition Movement, which is all about working collaboratively and across sectors to end malnutrition. My second guest is Dr. Manjestu Asnake, the Ethiopia Country Director of Pathfinder International, a global leader in reproductive health and family planning. Welcome to both of you. Thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you. Gerda, you're going to be one of the featured guests on today's plenary se session entitled The Power of Integration and Scale. Can you give us a sneak peek about some of the lessons learned that you'll be sharing in today's session and how you can bring those lessons to scale? Yes, let me, um, let me give three examples. First is have the right, uh, the right stakeholders around the table, including women, because women are carriers of progress and very often they are the, the change agents. But bring them around the table and level the power. Put women into their uh, power, into their strength. Um, and that's the first thing, have the right people around the table. The second point is have a clear agenda. So develop an, uh, a, a challenge or an objective where everybody uh, uh, agrees upon and th discuss about how to make it structural so that people uh, in communities, in districts, can own the change and can develop their own future because that is uh, where it's all about. And my third lesson is celebrate successes because um, uh, successes breed more successes. And if you celebrate um, uh, collaboration and concrete success, you're very, uh, very much encouraged to trust each other more and better and to scale up. And then put a camera on it, uh, invite journalists <laughs> to put a piece in the paper and make clear that in the capital uh, they know about the successes in your community or in your district so that uh, more politicians and more decision makers and more fund um, uh, spenders uh, are interested. Amplification. Amplification, sure. Great. Manjestu, another plenary session today is going to be examining how systematic change can lead to more individual empowerment. In your work as public in public health in Ethiopia, how have you seen systematic change lead to better sexual and reproductive health and rights for girls and women? Uh, thanks so much, uh, Susan. One of the important areas in terms of improving the individual empowerment is working at the system level. Mm -hmm. When we work at the system level, if I take the example of family planning, where women wants to use family planning services, but if those services are not accessible mm -hmm. in their villages, in their uh, places, they have to move long distances to get those services from distance facilities. Mm -hmm. So within the system, if there is a decentralized health system where facilities are available within a very short reach to the women living in the village, that means they can easily get those services which they need. One thing which is there for most of us working in health programs, we feel that if drugs are available, for example, family planning commodities are available everywhere, women can use it. But the whole issue is if they cannot get it very near to their village and if those commodities are available distant, like 40, 50 kilometers away from their village, they don't, even though the service is free, mm -hmm. even though the provider can provide those services without charge, mm -hmm. because they have to pay an opportunity cost of transport, leaving their uh, home, uh, leaving their household chores and other activities without getting support at the, ho at the household level, that is an additional cost for them, so they cannot use it. So cost is also another important issue which is there. So within the system, if there is healthcare financing, 
strategy, policy, where either it's using uh, free services or covered by the system, which includes the public sector, private sector, or other stakeholders, or an insurance system within the community level that includes family planning and other services, then that makes it easier for the wom individual woman to use those services. Not only that, the quality. Uh, if a woman wants to use what she needs, mm -hmm. and if that's not available, first of all, the quality of service in terms of getting her choices is affected. Mm -hmm. In addition to that, the whole issue of providing woman-friendly and responsive services is an important area within the quality of services. So in order to do these things, the affordability, accessibility, acceptability, and quality within the uh, uh, system, mm. we need to make a lot of change in the system, which benefits a lot the individual women and families. Mm -hmm. So it's really about changing the whole ecosystem yeah. so that it can be responsive to the lived realities that she has. That's, that's the most important thing. We need to change the whole ecosystem. But at the same time also, we, need, we know that we have evidences. We know that things are working. But what we do sometimes is beyond what we know. Mm -hmm. So by bridging the gap between what we know and what we do, then we give the opportunity for the woman, for the family, to use the services and to be empowered on their decision making. Okay. Now, in another session today, we're going to be looking at a, a session called The Power of Lift, which builds on this idea that it's going to take all of us to come together to achieve gender equality. Uh, because we know that change happens at many levels, not just at one level. Greta, at the international level, well, level, where you primarily work right now, what does supporting one another look like? Well, um, first of all, and the uh, inspirational thing here is that there are so uh, many uh, powerful women, uh, not meaning having a high level of power, but the way that they, they, they are stepping into their personal uh, strength mm -hmm. and uh, inspiring, are inspiring other people is really heartening. And I think uh, that is the, the, the success of uh, Women Deliver. Mm -hmm. It's really amazing to see also a lot of young uh, people, young women stepping up mm -hmm. uh, and stepping out, etc. So um, have the guts to step into your power as, uh, as a woman, empower others, and then use your power to make the right choices and to vote for those politicians and those leaders who are really opening up also for uh, women. Because women alone mm. cannot make it happen. You need to have strong champions among men mm -hmm. um, who all also are ready to create some space for, uh, for women and not only giving in if they are really beaten by, uh, by women because that's not structural. But um, fathers, brothers, uh, community leaders, religious leaders, cultural leaders, mm. uh, traditional leaders, they all need to uh, do their thing and to be ready to reconsider traditions and culture for the best of their society. Because improving the position of women, starting with girls, sending them to school, but even better, investing in their nutrition, nutritionist, uh, nutritional uh, status, um, is an investment in the quality of society and is an investment not only in one sustainable development goal, the gender goal, mm -hmm. but it's an investment in all 17 sustainable yeah. development goals. It brings social progress and prosperity and it will bring economic uh, prosperity. So put, let me put it the other way around. Those political leaders who are not investing in uh, gender equality or in education or in nutrition mm -hmm. are not investing in people and are not investing in a prosperous future for their country. Great. One example of the international collaboration that you are a part of at Sun yeah. um, is the Deliver for Good campaign. Yeah. And it's really about the international collaboration of organizations and different sectors coming together. You mentioned nutrition, you mentioned education yeah. and health. Can you talk about how that came to be and, and how it's working? Well, it's realizing that, um, that, you, that um, 
if you only work in your own silo, like we have done uh, decades, for decades, you will not reach it. I mean, the richness of the sustainable development goals, is that, they, uh, that they are interconnected, and you cannot reach one sustainable development goals without, without the, un, uh, the other. No better health without better gender, no better nutrition without a good connection with health and education and women empowerment. I can continue, no peace and stability, mm -hmm. no economic uh, development. So the interconnection is there. What we do in, um, uh, in this global movement is recognizing that each partner cannot do it on, uh, on its own. And it's learning how to step out of your comfort zone and to take the risk of building a partnership with those organizations you never have worked uh, with. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, a clear agenda, a clear uh, moderator around the table, but also a clear focus on results that are durable and sustainable and institutional, like you said, um, is, is of immense importance because it's encouraging success and success breeds more success. So at global level right now, we uh, are exchanging, but also learning from each other and holding each other to account. Mm -hmm. But let's be realistic, the real change has to happen and is happening at country level. And sometimes it's exciting to see how strong people want to take the future in their own hands. Mm -hmm. And very often with formal or informal female leaders. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a perfect seg segue for a question that I was going to ask you. What does it look like at the community level? Um, it, it, was, it was already raised a little bit uh, uh, earlier. And one of the things is, before even talking about like the power lift at the community level, I mean, we need to really understand some of the principles. One of the major things which, which should be there is like, it should not be prescriptive. Mm -hmm. yeah. When we talk about community, which we most of the time make it an, as an error where we feel that we know better than the community when they know more than what we know. Mm -hmm. And the most important thing is one needs to know the local context and based on that local context, who are the actors within the community? Uh, who are the champions with, within the community? Including not only dealing with the formal structure, the informal structure will have a major influence. As it was said earlier, religious leaders, elders, uh, informal groupings, both women, youth groups, uh, men groups, all of them will have a stake in terms of bringing about the power lift in the community. If we work only in silo or only in, with one of the groups, we may not bring about the change we want. Mm -hmm. So the whole issue is like, we need to listen to the community. We need to know about the local context within the community before we use our traditional way of prescriptive uh, interventions or prescriptive way of doing things. Mm -hmm. As you both know, power is the focus of this year's conference. Yeah. And later today, we're going to hear about the power of arts to reshape people's perceptions, um, and also the power of stories to translate sexual and reproductive health and rights into something that all people can understand. And we're asking this uh, from everyone, from governments, from officials, from communi to community members, artists and activists and advocates and academics, how will you use your power? Well, um, first of all, um, I have been blessed by so many people who gave me space when I uh, asked to stand in, in, in my power. Secondly, um, is you're blessed. If you are uh, able to lead an international uh, movement, you should invite other people to step into the power and use it to empower other people. It's not uh, uh, taking power to uh, have the pow power over and mm -hmm. to uh, make sure that other people do what you want, but empower people to take the future of themselves and their families into their own hand and build a better future. Because development cooperation uh, and, and collaboration can only be uh, structural if people are able to move uh, uh, towards their own future. Um, it's not through funding that you can create a better uh, future. It is through uh, 
uh, people. So wherever I go, I used to uh, give my own uh, examples. You can learn from your uh, failures. Don't um, uh, feel uncomfortable to step out of your comfort zone because sometimes it's, um, well, it's risky, mm -hmm. but it's really worthwhile to see how also other uh, players, other actors, for instance, private sector, are ready to step out of their comfort zone and are asking, what can we bring to the table? Mm -hmm. And how do you have a conversation? And how do you tell each other what you expect and hope to see from each other? And that is so inspiring. So it's difficult to step out of your comfort zone, but the sustainable development goals and women empowerment both ask people to step out of their comfort zone. Without this, um, we will not be successful. So for me, the sustainable development goals are, are the sustainable innovation goals, mm -hmm. because everyone needs to do it. The UN donors need to rethink their way of, uh, mm -hmm. of funding. It's not about follow the funding. It is about what is the desire of people at grassroots level, because that's the way, the best way. And business ca businesses should really rethink their business case and not just follow it, their marketing and their research, but have a straight conversation and see how you can make this world a better place, leaving no one behind. Great. And what about you? How do you plan to use your power? Um, with all the inspiration, the last two days, uh, including today, uh, the whole issue is like, no one should be left behind. Mm -hmm. But when we say no one should be left behind, when 50% of the population are women, when one third of the population in most places are used without the involvement of women and youth, we cannot m bring about change. So that's, that's one of the powerful things in terms of like involving women to make decisions, bringing them to the, the, the decision, decision making levels, uh, both in terms of uh, private government, community decision making powers, and also consider use us not only the future, mm. but use are also decision makers of today. And by, by doing that, we can, we can make a lot of change. The lessons, the inspiration from this conference, and also a lot of commitment being taken, such as uh, the very, uh, I mean, game-changing commitment from the government of Canada, uh, uh, yesterday by the uh, Prime Minister of uh, uh, Canada in terms of uh, a huge resources for supporting women's health with a major part of it for sexual reproductive health and rights is a very powerful thing where we can take it further and use yeah. that to make an improvement yeah. into but that. But we shouldn't only look at, uh, at the big leaders uh, and wait to, for them to, uh, to act because then we can wait uh, uh, um, for uh, for a long time because yeah. then it's funding and then yes. it's a lot of priorities yeah. etc. There's always something, but all of us we uh, are leaders. We can lead from where we are, uh, in what what kind of position at school, in the community, in the health sector, in the education sector, in the nutrition sector, as a farmer etc. Lead from where you are and build upon what is there. Don't invent the wheel totally, because that has happened also very often. Yeah, I think duplication is something that we also need to be very mindful of. Yeah, yeah. Um, so also the integration of uh, things. Eh? Uh, not one day is health day, the other day is education, mm -hmm. and then on Wednesday it's nutrition day. No, make smart combinations. And then um, tell uh, uh, donors and, and investors that they uh, need to invest in once, bringing it to a holistic sure. uh, approach. Well, thank you both for your time and insights today. And thank you all uh, to the viewers for tuning in. Remember, please join us throughout the day for streaming the conference coverage, as well as special WD Live content. You can find us on Facebook and on YouTube and at wd2019.org. Thanks again.